Good afternoon, everybody. This is Sandra Sheffrey, president of the Democratic Women's Club of Greater Broward. We're back. We're still in the election aftermath, believe it or not, because we have a president elect, but then we kind of maybe don't have a president elect because <laughs> there's a problem with the whole transitioning. So we're going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about the black vote. We're going to talk about the 55 percent. We're going to talk about what's happening in Georgia. Um, some of what's happened in Pennsylvania and just, you know, we have to keep, we have to keep up this momentum. We're going to, um, and the other thing we're going to talk about in Georgia too, is that there's a, sen um, there's a runoff for the two um, senators that are running. We need to get those two democratic senators elected, John Ossoff and Reverend Raphael um, War Warnock, right? We need to have some guys elected because that's going to make a huge difference. That was the Senate 50-50. And uh, Vice President elect, <laughs> Madam Vice President Kamala Harris, will have the tiebreaker, right? So, because she's the President of the Senate, and that will make a whole difference in um, President elect Joe Biden having his agenda passed. You know, he's talking about health care, all of the great things that he wants to do. Um, if Mitch McConnell, the, Mitch McConnell is the majority leader, that's going to be real hard. So, we need to really get those. Um, those two senators elected and Democratic senators elected in Georgia. So Georgia, thank you for going blue and we need you to show up on January 5th. Um, I think the early vote may start sometime in December. I'll get those dates and let you know, but we definitely need you to definitely early vote and definitely vote um, January 5th for um, those two Democratic candidates, um, um, Reverend um, Raphael Warnock and um, 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 Ossoff. All right, so here I am again, Sandra Sheffrey. I'm here with Tay Ford. Um, Narnik is actually going to introduce her, and we have Stephanie Anderson. She was um candidate um um a candidate for City of Hollywood District um two seat. Uh, she's going to talk about that today, right? Because you know there's a lot of election aftermath, right? So we're going to talk a little bit about how that was yeah. being a candidate, like what's it like, you know, after you know all of, all of it that. Was hell. It was hell. It was hell. I, I, I can sure you have so many days of hard work <laughs> and to come close, right? So we'll talk, we'll talk a little bit about that. And she could talk about what that's like. Um, you know, what what does she see from the voters? Because you know, we had some outcomes in, that kind of hurt us, right? And just to me, it hurt my feelings. So Mommy Day kind of was blue, but we had some people who we thought was gonna, you know, kind of help Florida turn blue too, that just kind of, I think, didn't do that part, you know? And since she was out there, maybe she could give us some perspective on that because she probably saw it happening where we were just kind of, you know, like, yeah, they're gonna be there because, you know, it's a clown, we gotta get the clown out, right? So everybody gonna get the clown out. But apparently 71 plus million people thought the clown should stay, but luckily 76 million said he gotta go, all right? Um, so we'll talk about that. So I'm gonna send it off to Narni and we're gonna get this conversation started and let's see where we go with it today. All right, so remember me again, Narni Grant, I was running for school board of Broward County, didn't get, didn't quite make it there in the primary, came in third, um, but it was uh, great for someone who's done, this is our first, first time doing it, never did it before. So I'm happy and excited about that. So we have with us tonight, so, you know, Stephanie is reoccurring. She came before, but Tay is all brand new. So Tay Ford is a Jamaican American wife, mother, healthcare practitioner in Parkland, Florida. Uh, through public speaking and com commenting, commenting, Tay is dedicated, or commenting, excuse me, that Tay, Tay is dedicated to fulfilling her life's purpose of helping people live more empowered lives uh, in areas of health, race, and representation. So we're really happy to have Tay here. She can give us some insight on the um, frontline workers. She can give us insight as a woman who voted for uh, a, a, a president that will bring back decency into our country. Um, and I'm excited for this conversation. Uh, we, we labeled it as a uh, after the election, where we go from here. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that. But the main focus today was going to be on that 55% of white women who decided that uh, misogyny and lies uh, was better than decency and truth. So we're gonna have a conversation about that. Um, so Sandra, where would you like to start? 
All right, so let, let's let's talk. Let's um get Stephanie started, so she because she she was part of the election. Um, she saw what was happening. She could give us some feedback. She could tell us if she was surprised by the outcome or what happened with the state of Florida. We'll talk about that, and then you know, then we'll go from there because we're gonna talk about the fifty five percent. Um, we're gonna talk about the Hispanic vote um, and what the Democratic Party is gonna need to do in order for them to figure out how we can. Um, turn Florida blue again. Florida was blue before. We can see we can turn it uh, Florida blue. And because I'm very surprised that Georgia became blue before um, blue was in this election, and we weren't. But you know there are reasons for that, so we can dissect that a little bit and talk. So we'll start. We'll start with Stephanie. Okay. So hi everybody. I'm Stephanie Anderson. I ran for a city commission district two of Hollywood. We began our race um, in June this year. Um, so that was roughly about five months of, of, of um, campaigning and going door to door. We spent about $15,000 and we garnered the same amount of votes as a candidate who started their race two years ago and spent $60,000. So we were quite encouraged by um, our numbers. We had um, 1,500 votes um, out of the, um, the district. We had roughly um, 10,000 um, votes people in the district that were registered and active and of those we had about 8,000 cast votes and um, one of the things that I noticed though during the, um, the election cycle was the fact that um, although I was in a nonpartisan race there were um, it, there were definitely um, partisan advantages that the other candidates had they were all registered with um, a major party and so they were able to be endorsed by those parties. And they also um, were on um, different um, voter guides that, and we were on um, independent nonpartisan voter guides with the exception of um, democratic progressives. And so um, it was, it was very um, eye opening in a sense that what I found was that we did not have a lot of end of the um, a lot of people that were engaged in the election per because of the local politics, they were engaged in this particular race because of being able to control the candidates that were up for election. And I definitely felt that way um, in terms of like um, the voter um, um, with, for instance, with our incumbent um, threatening and bullying different organizations and agencies that if they weren't able to, um, if they didn't support him, that they wouldn't get their initiatives that they wanted supported, all those kinds of things. And so um, this was the most unnatural thing that I've ever done um, voluntarily. And, um, you know, I've run, um, I've, I've attempted to run before, but have been, but because of the money and politics and the ballot tax that I call it, um, I was um, removed from the ballot because I refused to pay 10% of the incumbent salary when I already pay her salary through taxes. <laughs> and so um, this was um, the actual time, of the, actually the first time that I've actually been on the ballot and gone through this entire process. So. Um, uh, what I would say is that um, we figured out a way to where we can compete. If we had started this race three months earlier, we probably would have had an entirely different outcome. But um, one of the things that we ran on was making sure that we did things differently. Instead of spending a lot of money on signs that are being torn down right Right now, we contributed to our community with school supplies and PPE, and we just went door to door. And um, we um, spent, of our budget of the $15,000, all of it, but $3,000 was spent within um, small uh, minority owned businesses in our district or women owned um, businesses in our district. Um, we didn't spend outside of our district except for a thank you billboard that was owned by a company that wasn't located here in district two. And so I just think that, you know, we have um, set 
the bar for a different way for people to run for uh, for office because at the end of the day what i would have liked to have seen since this was a local race and it's supposed to be a nonpartisan race was us all coming together and saying how can we spend the resources that we're about to be putting out there campaigning and make that and have that make a difference in our community and i know that that's really not the nature of politics but i guess just because of you know, my background with um, with collaborating and nonprofits and bringing people together, I just felt like um, we could have done things differently. And so um, there was a lot of negative um, um, and Biden clashing going on. One of my supporters was beaten up. She's a female. She had on a, yes, she had on my shirt on her way from a Biden support organization, uh, Biden support rally to um, campaign for me at the polls. So she had on my shirt, she was carrying a Biden um, sign and she had an American flag and some individuals who claimed to be QAnon um, beat her up. So she um, she's a white Canadian. She was not prepared for any of this. And so, um, the the fact that the numbers were so close do not surprise me at all so i have, I have because we minute. literally had democratic candidates mm -hmm. no there's one of the things you said that i think against really sandra important. yeah there's one of the things you said that i think is extremely important um um alfredo from the dolphin democrat had posted something either yesterday or today with all of the flyers that he got um, during the election cycle, you know, all the, the mail, the mailers, he just, I mean, it was just like, it felt like it was a thousand of them, right? That it was just, it was just piled up. And, you know, and I commented, I was like, I hope those people use printers in the community, right? And they use small businesses. I hope they use small businesses and they use like local printers in order for them to do that because that money should not have gone to like a big corporation. And one of the candidates, I mean, he, unfortunately he didn't win his race either, but one of the candidates like, yep, he definitely did that. And I just hope more candidates do that. And what you did was, is absolutely awesome that you kept the money in the district because that's what needs to happen. And that you use small businesses instead of going to like the big printers, you know, because I mean, it even me, yeah. it's like every, some of them never even made it in my house, right? And I felt bad about it, but I'm like, I don't want all this stuff in my house. So, but I, so I hope, and I at least hope that somebody <laughs> local, you know, got to make money, you know, printing on um, all of those mailers. So, anybody running in the future, please just try to do that because that's absolutely like what should happen is you really should keep the money in the district and to and give it to a small business. Absolutely, absolutely. And so, uh, you know, one of the things that uh, even to that point was that um, one of the companies that I went to, um, you know, you actually even have to vet them because some of them will be working with your competitors. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think I may have told you guys this, but I had a print that I was originally going to go with who um, basically cursed me out because I refused to put my picture on the mail out that was going out. I put my information, I put my credentials, and I didn't think that it was necessary to put my picture. Um, you know, I wanted people to choose to vote for me based on you know, what they saw in black and white. And so, um, but I, learned, I eventually found out that that was because they wanted to split the vote between me and the other. So it was just like, just so much background stuff that was just underhanded that you know you would just never think of um, i had to record the other candidate the other the incumbent because they were recording me you know like you know uh, recording our tags um but what i do want to say is with all of that being said the fact that they were that hard um and i think Nornike can also attest to this the fact that they went so hard on us just shows that we are a credible threat um, because we are a viable choice, an option that they didn't have before. People mm -hmm. want to see qualified candidates out here that are nonpartisan and not, you know, falling on a Democrat or a Republican flag. And I'm telling you that literally they were out there with flags, waving them, falling on them, like fighting in the, in the streets. And um, it's unfortunate, but you said something, Sandra, about um, the 55%. And we have um, in my family quite a few um, white women and they were lobbying us 
they were calling the black women and telling us we needed to vote for Trump. <laughs> okay, this is a great segue, Stephanie. Thank you so much. Um, I can't believe that you had one of your, um, you know, volunteers attack that way. I'm very yes. sorry to hear that. Um, very disappointing. Very disappointing. Is she okay? She is okay. She was shaken up and, and bruised and law enforcement responded. Um, the media actually also came out and covered it because they were just, you know, you know, it was is the narrative that um, that has been out there is that protesters are the ones that are initiating violence, that the people who have been victim of uh, these egregious acts and they're now bringing attention to them by protesting that we are now perpetrating violence when that is so um, backwards because if we were going to perpetrate that violence wouldn't we have done that at the act itself as opposed to at the protest and so what it did though was it really caused attention to the fact of who was really leading the, the these violent absolutely actions. absolutely absolutely um so let's segue into the uh 55 percent so tay Let's start with you. Let's, um, you know, you got relatives get... calling you too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we'll get, we're gonna find out if Tay got phone calls also. Um, I'm still, my husband is, my husband is a registered uh, Democrat, but he is getting emails from the Trump administration. So I just want you, I'm gonna put that out there. I, I like every day. But Tay, why don't we talk, why don't we just do you talk, give us a little bit of background of you and, 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 um, of you and, and how you're doing and also and segue into the 55% and want to hear your thoughts. Yeah, so um, you know, first of all, thank everybody for having me on the platform. I truly appreciate it. Um, and thank you to everybody out there watching. Um, as Narnik had introduced me in the beginning, I am a healthcare practitioner and um, I'm a Morehouse wife. My husband is a Morehouse man um, for undergrad and he's, uh, ever since he went to undergrad, in Atlanta and a grad school in Atlanta as well. He's always been involved in the political scene. Um, so uh, by me being married to him, it's just inevitable. So um, although I'm a healthcare practitioner, I do dib and dabble in um, just basically getting our community where we need to be um, as far as realizing our potential, the potential that we have in electing uh, these elected officials and the people who basically reflect, nobody's gonna reflect the exact views that we have unless they are us, right? And even with that, all skin folk, all skin folk and kin folk, right? As they say, but um, the, the candidate who most aligns with our views, right? So to segue on to the 55%, that is such a hot topic. Um, I just cannot believe that 55% 55, 55 of white women actually tapped into the worst deep-seated prejudice and bigotry that they could ever um, do in order to align their views with the just fascism of President Trump. I, I just, I cannot believe it, um, that women would really stoop, uh, you know, ju just to really equate themselves with him after all the things that he said about women after all the things that he said about uh, mentally challenged people, after all the things that he said about um, people that are going through coronavirus, right, who have contracted, everybody, everybody in the world has been affected by coronavirus, whether it's not us ourselves, somebody that we know, right, and he just makes a mockery of everything. I just can't believe that they would tap into um, the continued uh, deterioration of democracy that President Trump has lent his hand in. It, it's it's mind boggling to me. It truly is. Yeah, and, and um, in the healthcare profession, and for me, it was like if it if it was for no other reason, even if I could put aside, you know, the sexism, the diss, and all that other stuff, I'm like, you can. This guy basically said that he was not going to deal with coronavirus anymore, right? Like he basically said, like he's like, we're turning the curb, the numbers are going down. I'm not dealing with this. And I'm like, well, how can you? People are dying every day. At that point, I think at the day of the election, it was already like. 230,000 people that had already passed away. And for him to like not be, not want to deal with this, I'm like, 
for that reason alone, I would say you can't vote for him because he don't have no problem with people just dying, like a thousand people dying every day. How could you give him four more years of this? And you being in the healthcare field, you probably see what you know the, the effects of coronavirus more than any of us um that's on this panel today. Tonight. Can I absolutely I I add Tay because you're you are in the healthcare profession and I do have someone on my Facebook who is a nurse who voted mm -hmm. for Trump and would vote for him again. And one of the responses for that is because she's on the front line. So can you just give us a little bit of a breakdown of why sure. you may think that and why you think the way you think? Okay, um, to be honest with you, I cannot relate to um, that person who is on your Facebook Facebook feed that is a you know frontline healthcare worker and particularly a registered nurse. I, I can't relate to her only because at the very beginning of the pandemic, before it was blown up to how it is now, right? I got a phone call on about, I want to say March 11th, say, stating that they need my assistance in New York, right? So I was like, what? No, I'm not gonna go to New York and you know, all this current talk about coronavirus. And they kept on calling me persistent, persistent, persistent. So I spoke it over with my husband and he said, well, Shantae, go ahead and see what's going on out there. So I went and I will let you guys know that at the beginning of the pandemic, when they were documented, it was very, very highly documented on CNN, MSNBC, um, Fox News of some sorts. It did not touch on what truly was going on in New York. When the plane landed and I got off of that tarmac in New York and I stepped inside the hospitals in New York, I had seen a sight that I had never seen in my, my life. In my 13 years of practicing, I have never ever seen patients die, come in alive and die within hours, within 30 minutes, gasping for ear, talk, talking like how we're talking right now, but within half an hour, completely dead. The ERs were flooded. There was gurneys everywhere. All the rooms had about three patients in each room. I'm talking about private rooms now, had about three patients in each room. Every ebb and flow of the hospital was completely drenched with human life. Whether dead or alive, it was drenched to the point where when somebody would pass, unfortunately, all that we could do was put a sheet over them and keep it trucking. I mean, there was refrigerated trucks outside that all we could do was go ahead and put those bodies in the refrigerated trucks. It, things went so fast for the length of time that I was there. I was there for two and a half weeks and things went so fast that you really didn't have a moment to really soak it in. You truly didn't. It wasn't as, until I came home, I said, I can't do this anymore. And I got on a flight and I came back home to Florida. And I had a quarantine before I even saw my family. It wasn't until that I was in the hotel room for two weeks that I really took everything in. And I honestly was traumatized and I still am. I've never seen anything like that. So how somebody can say that they're a frontline worker and say that they're on the front line and they see all of this and they're still voting for President Trump. When we were in the hospital, we didn't have PPE, Nikki. We didn't have PPE, Sandra. We didn't have PPE, Stephanie. He says that how we were, they, were bringing, um, they were bringing us N95s and they were bringing ventilators. That's completely inaccurate. Mm -hmm. That was completely inaccurate. I mean, I had patients that were 35 years old, the only, uh, the only diagnosis that they had or impairment that they had was probably diabetes. And because they were 35 years old without, with diabetes, the doctor said that, you know, we only have one ventilator in the house. We can't use it on this 35 year old patient. So it's completely healthy otherwise, you know? So the things that I saw was completely traumatizing. So I, I, I can't relate to that. And can no. I tell you, my mom, my mom has a, one of her neighbors, he worked at a hospital in Miami. He was, he worked in a hospital for 18 years, right? And mm -hmm. when you, the statement you made about the refrigerated trucks outside and how they were putting the bodies there, he saw, after he saw that, he quit. Like literally, mm -hmm. like he was like, I can't do this. I'm not coming back to work. He literally said, nope, I got to go, right? Because mm -hmm. you're literally taking bodies out of the hospital, yes. put them in trucks outside. And he just said he, he, he could not believe like what was happening how people were being treated and, and not necessarily because it was anything they could do about it but just because of the sheer volume of people that were coming in yes at that, that particular time and just that side alone i mean this man was two years from retirement and he's like i can't come back here not one more day and just left yes. his job with nothing else to do you know and so with that yeah with that i was just like for that alone i'm just like how can you vote for someone that don't want to take this as seriously as they should simple as like wearing a mask 
um, having events where you're not even encouraging, you know, those super spreader events, right? There was a study that came out of Stanford that some of the news don't want to report, but they're like, they were like, they can credibly say that they can, um, they can find that 30,000 coronavirus cases. That was at the time the study came out. They can attribute that those 30,000 cases specifically to events that the, um, that the president had, and they can attribute about 700 deaths specifically to the events that this president had, right? So this guy's being so reckless and just the things that he's doing you can't you can't trust him to make sure everybody else is okay so to me it's, exactly. it's absolutely stunning and mind-boggling that it's you know stunning, it's stunning the fact that the 55 percent of white women that made that decision a conscious decision to vote for a man um and and let's just I'm just we're all women here women have a, a, a sense of nurturing a sense of uh you know you know, making sure that everybody around us is taken care of and protected. And for women to make a decision, white women to make a decision that completely dishonors women in general um, is, is uh, hurtful. I know I saw a couple of TikToks with one black woman crying and she's like, this is hurtful. We, we, try, to be, we try to bridge this gap with them. We try to have this sisterhood. We try to have um, this cohesiveness because of our gender, right? And we try to bring them in and, 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 and we think that we can appeal to their female nature to understand the plight of the black woman. And even remember, remember at one of his rallies, the, the senator candidate in Arizona, McSally, right? He was one, and he, she's not just supporting him, you know, pushing his agenda. And he's at an event. He's like, hurry up. You got like two seconds to yes. talk like you're at a rally. And she's like running like, you know, yes. go talk. And she's like, hey, and then he makes her go. And I'm like, you chick, you out here. Mind you, this is in the midst of an election. And he's disrespecting somebody that's out here supporting and promoting him. And that's how he's treating her. You you know, that's how he's treating. Them. I'm like, he's doing this right now. He didn't do this like with the before the election. We're in the midst of an election and he's mistreating one Absolutely. of yours like this in your face. And you're okay with that? I sound real popular, but if you look at, um, at this in general, like if you look at this historically, let's just look back at, you know, what happened when we had white women championing um, the cause against equal rights for women you know, and claiming that they needed to have, um, that they had rights as housewives. You can have, you can stay at home, mm -hmm. but you, that doesn't, that doesn't um, discount your rights that you need as women. Mm -hmm. And so I think that what has happened is that in this particular case, white women were told by their white husbands that economically they are better off because of this president. And I can see why they would say that in terms of tax wise, because what this president did was he eliminated exemptions. And so if you were uh, uh, making $100,000 a year and you had no exemptions before except yourself, now you've got $20,000 of your little money exempt and you feel like, oh, I've, I've done something. I've, I'm doing a little bit better. Um, but that's the, the, the point is that the people that are really in that income bracket where say you um, you have $50,000 a year and you had four exemptions before, you're doing a lot worse. Yeah. And so um, white women, um, and I would like to see the breakdown of where they came from. I would say, I would guess that they came from two different categories. They were either super, super poor or super, super rich. That is the, that's where that 55% came from. And, um, and at the end of the day, what they did was they voted based on what um, white men told them to vote for. And I and know it doesn't that- affect their life, right? Because if you're super, super poor and you're living off assistance, your lifestyle is not going to change no matter who the president is for real, right? So, and then if you, if you, if you know, you got that, you balling, you know, your lifestyle really ain't going to change. It's not going to change either. But if, you're, if you're white and poor, you have the hope that your lifestyle can change to where you might become in that category where you ball in. Um, and that's the thing that, that, that just the thing that you have to understand. Mm -hmm. Like if you are a white person in this country, the possibility of you getting out of whatever economic situation you're in, if it's bad, is about 100% better, mm -hmm. and more likely than it is for a black person. Mm -hmm. and so 
they vote based on what the possibility is for their life, not understanding that that vote is actually keeping you from getting to that possible, that place. And so it's uh, uh, marketing. Um, and then the other thing was on, um, was on um, abortion. That was a huge issue, a, a reason why they decided to, um, to support this president again, thinking that, you know, their wombs, I don't understand the abortion I issue. I don't get it. Well, don't here's get the it thing, but, but, but statistics show white women are having more abortions than black women. It don't even matter who's doing it. It's like, that's not your business. Thing in this country. <laughs> Um, and that's one of those things where it's like, who cares who's doing it? It's like, that's so not your business. Like, it's absolutely not your business whether somebody wants to have, take care of their kids or not. But the interesting people, are, you know, the, one of the comments that are also made is like, you know, they're, they're, they don't want women to have abortions, but they're okay with kids being in cages. So which children is it that you care about, right? Like, do you exactly. care about children, period, or it's just certain kids? Like, I mean, that whole thing is just so... So oh, so let's so let me I read you the 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 text message that I got from I hope she's not watching you might be watching on auntie but <laughs> that I got from my white aunt my, my, okay so um, because this is really the message that they were they were being given and this is a message that they were putting out there and and that you have to really blame sort of Fox News for it but um, it says wow that's really powerful I will admit and I felt that Blank and I felt the same way when he announced that he was running for president. I was supporting Ben Carson and I didn't like the idea of Trump at all. However, I will say that I felt I feel differently after his presidency. So white women started to they got him into office and then they felt like he made a difference in their lives. And so she says, for me, it's mostly because he has supported issues that are important to me, to people of faith. The Democrats have promoted abortion until full term and even placed 80% of Planned Parenthood uh, are located in black communities. Their founder, Margaret Sanger. So they, they literally got the whole party line going out there to these white women who are spewing that back out and not only spewing it, but believing it. And so that's, you know, when we wonder why that 55, where that 55, and it's a lot longer than that. Like it was a long text message. Up. Listen, but, you know what, Steph? I, I, to me, that's disingenuous. Okay. Absolutely. I, listen, I don't believe none of that. That's like, to me, that's complete yes. nonsense, right? That's a cover up. That's the. Yes. I, Trying, I'm trying not to curse, okay? So to me, that's they could just say that, you know what I mean? So they don't say what they really, really, really feel, exactly. right? And I, you know, I don't know your white aunt. I'm sure she's like a great person and all that kind of stuff or whatever. But that right, all that talk right there, listen, to me, that's cold for some other stuff. You got some different kind of feelings, right? You you wanna you gonna say this man has faith. Like, like you think he really believes in God? Like that dude right there believes in God? He sits in one, in two sentences, he tells like five lies, okay? So that's the guy you want to believe is a person of faith? Get out of here with that. Again, I don't know your auntie. Um, She got a, apparently she must love somebody of color if she's in your family or whatever. She got black kids and that's what we tried to explain so, to her. So that, that, listen. <laughs> So let me, so this next way, this segues into something that Sandra and I were dealing with um, during the week. And I tell you, we gave you a little bit of context in the back um, before we started, but Stephanie, you don't have a context and I'm not gonna say the person's name, but that's someone we mutually know, Stephanie. Um, and so the issue that I have with this person, this is a white woman um, who um, is uh, supposed to be an ally, okay? And one of the issues that I uh, have is that I feel that white people need to be in their white space, talking to their white people and educating their white people if they are allies with us, right? That is your job. That's your allyship. That's what you're supposed to do. So you don't come on to a black post and or black audience post that's uh, rich with black people to educate us. We don't need education. Okay, we already know what we have people, pardon? Not that kind of education anyway. Not that kind of, not that, not, that, not, not that kind of education. Mm. Right, we already have, um, you know, our activists, our people that we follow, that we support, that is there to kind of lead us and guide us, collaborate with us so we can make a difference within our, within our group. Your, 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 your stance is to support from over here. This is our space. And if we allow you to speak in our space, therefore you may do so. So um, I had an issue with, uh, so a black person 
posted on their post about Biden saying that, oh, this is not your savior. You shouldn't be, you know, going, going ho for him. We don't know and all that other stuff. That's within their rights to speak that they're talking to their black audience, talking to their brothers and sisters. We're having conversation. But then the white person jumps in and puts a post about the, the, all these laws, these racist laws that Biden made. Okay. I, I, what, what my response was, you're running on the assumption we don't know this. Yeah. You're running on the assumption that we don't understand what's going on. We know this, we understand. Stop pushing out that stupid narrative. We got it, right? Person doubles down and says, uh, I'm, I'm just trying to educate. You need to know your history. No, 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 bitch. No, no, no. <laughs> You don't need to tell us our history. We live our history every day, yeah. okay? We're constantly living our history. Yeah. That is not your place. The person double downs again and, and tries to, to just talk to the point where it was back and forth, back and forth. Now, mind you, this is not that person's post. It's somebody else's post. But we're going back and forth because at some point, you need to realize you're, you, you're not Black. You don't know the black experience. If you want to be an ally, your allyship should be part of a support, not someone trying to tell you can't come in and be an ally and dictate how things go. It don't work like that. It just and doesn't. The, the thing about it is it's the exact same thing that they're trying to do that. Um, so if you're, if we, you don't, it's you're they're They're assuming that we don't know about Biden. And um, like we're assume, like they're assuming that we don't that they don't know about Trump. <clears throat> they know about Trump. They made a conscious decision to support him anyway. Mm -hmm. We made a conscious decision to support Biden instead of the racist, uh, overtly racist Trump. We well, know that. I'm gonna stop you. I'm gonna stop you one more time, Stephanie. Listen, the only problem, the, the pro Trump's biggest problem ain't that he racist, right? Pr Trump's biggest problem is that he don't know how to do this job. Okay, yeah, the man, this man does not know how to do this job. He's not fit to do this job. He doesn't know how to do it. He doesn't really want to do it. He just likes the title and the fact that y'all, that taxpayers are willing to pay for him to go to golf. Okay, exactly. this man don't want this job. He does not know how to do this job. That's the biggest problem. But he, but he hides he, that behind racism. Huh? And that's it. But he hides, he hides all behind that behind racism. racism. He hides he, what behind race that he can't, that he's not fit to leave he behind racism. All of that behind racism because then people can focus on the things that he's doing. Either his followers are focusing on his overt actions or the people that are against him are focusing on his overt actions. But at oh, the, the end- smoke and mirror so you don't see the real deal that he just not fit to lead. Okay. Yeah. And so at the end of the day, I say that, you know, um, y'all have been telling us to pick the, be the, the, the better of two evils for all this time. And now that you had two um, per people um, side by side, and one of them was um, clearly evil. 55% uh, of white women voted for him. And that's I'm explaining that they will have to do to their children. And they can make the excuses that my aunt made about, you know, and then she even tied it to where, um, you know, people are suffering um, under Trump. We are. No, you're not. You own like half of California. You ain't suffering. Don't tell us. And that's the other thing that I have, the problem I have with Republicans, because now they're trying to make it seem as if Democrats and nonpartisans and poor people are the elites in the society. They actually call us the elites, you know, and so you know, this reverse narrative that they keep spending, sending out to, to their constituency is the reason why there's so much confusion and there's so much of them just blindly following this. But if you watch Fox News, you'll see exactly why 55% of white women voted for him. So Tay, right. so Tay there, was a, there was a post um, that you posted right after you got the news of Biden. Mm -hmm. And you posted it on a particular group. Mm -hmm. And when you posted it, and it was removed, Subsequently, yes. was it? okay, all right. So you posted on a particular group, and uh, when you posted, I was one of the first people to post under there. Yay! You know we won. Yeah. Um, and then right after you had that fifty-five percent uh, come in and say, and they husbands, uh, and they husbands, <laughs> and say, oh, Democrats stole the race or whatever. So my response was, prove it. Yeah. Um, came back. You know, it was like this back and forth. So I text Tay and I said, um, your post is blowing up. I'm not sure what these people want, but they, I have time today, <laughs> right? 
So um, she responded again. And I said, listen, I realize you're bitter, you're upset. And, and, and my president did say to give you some time to get over it, lick your wounds. Um, but what I will tell you is to go and find you a black woman and tell her thank you that she <laughs> said from yourself. Right? Mm -hmm. So then she comes back with something nasty. You know how that is. So I yeah. said, you know what? Be blessed and go with God. Right. So then Tay, I think you responded to some of the posts and uh, now, you know, they want to tell, oh, I thought this was, I thought this page was not supposed to be political. So Tay, tell us, you know, um, why did you feel that you wanted to put it on that post knowing that, and I think you do know that how those people are in that specific group are, can be. Right. So um, in aligning, aligning myself with the group's rules and, and the compliance, um, this post actually was not a political post. Um, it wasn't leaning towards one um, party opposition or the other. Um, I made a comment and I posted, um, democracy is restored. That's exactly what I said. And um, a lot of people um, that aligned themselves, a lot of women within that 55%, they came for me under that post, which was okay because um, I knew that was gonna happen. I knew that was gonna happen because this particular group that I posted that comment in is a by and large majority Caucasian um, affluent um, group. Right, and um, it's 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 where Narnik and I live in the in the city of where we live. So um, I knew that that was going to happen, and um, I was okay with that because, and the reason why I was okay with that because I felt that at that moment it was important for us to be seen and heard. And um, I feel like the Black diaspora, whether you're Jamaican, Haitian, um, Af whatever you are that falls under the di Black diaspora, the part that made us elect Joe Biden as the president, I feel like we've stepped up in a major way, definitely, and thus leading to the election of Joe Biden. So I felt like my voice, I wanted to lend my voice to that. Um, and not just for Joe Biden, I think that many of us that lent us to electing Joe Biden was really there for Kamala Harris, most definitely. Um, Show America that representation matters, you know? And um, I just wanted them to realize that representation does in fact matter, not just by and large in America, but down to these small cities as well. We're just not here to be shut up and, and, and be welcomed um, and you should be glad that you're living here amongst us. No, we are the people that are actually bringing back the restoration and the homeostasis of this country. You know, so I, it wasn't to be vile, it wasn't to be crude, it really wasn't to upset them at all. It was just saying that doc, uh, democracy is restored and you know it just led to a whole bunch of chaos but um i think the reason why um they acted in that way narnique is because white people by and large they fear black people they definitely do and for the life of me i can't understand why they fear black people so much because black people don't have a history of harming white people White people have a history of harming Black people. You can bring up any history textbook. We don't have a history of killing white people. They have a history of killing us. You understand what I'm saying? But what they fear is this. They fear this, you know? And I, I, think, it's, I think it's very important that we continue to be seen and we can continue to be heard and we continue to be engaged um, about what's going on. Um, at the beginning of the forum, I think that Sanja was talking about John Ossif and she was talking about Reverend um, Pastor Warnock in Atlanta. And it's important that we continue to engage our people and let them know that the fight is not over. We still have January because without us electing those two uh, candidates in the runoff, everything was really for no reason. It, it truly was. So we definitely have to get them engaged and we have definitely have to get them out to vote. Instead of commenting and dedicating your whole 24 hours talking about a broken bag and who has this and who has that. And you know what I mean? It, it's just, let's go ahead and, and, and let's, let's keep that upward trajectory on what truly matters. And what truly matters is to bringing it all home, bring it back, you know, restoring democracy, not just with the presidency, but with these candidates as well. Cause we need not only the house, but we need the Senate.
Absolutely. And I want to make a couple of comments. So I, I I was privy to some of the comments on that post, right? Okay. And one of the things, right? And and to me, it's all they always hiding behind something, right? The fifty five percent is always hiding behind their true feelings. Because one of the one of the comments that was made was like, "Oh, I feel sorry for the police officers, right? Because <laughs> you feel sorry for the police officers. What the yeah." Okay, so what that's what so now apparently, you know, all of a sudden now cops are going life are going to be in danger because Joe Biden gets elected. Like really, yes. what are you talking about? So police officers kill people every day now, right? They they literally kill somebody every day, sometimes a few people every day, but now y'all scared for the police officers, okay? Cuz part of the pro- cuz they you know they 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 again, and one of the things that um Stephanie said is that that whole marketing, they market things in a way to, to keep people divided and to keep mm-hmm. other yeah. people excited, like, oh my God, you know, keeping people scared, right? Because that whole defund the police thing that they're talking about. So apparently that's why they scared of the police officers, which we're not really, people aren't asking for them to defund the police. They're asking them for police reform, which is necessary because you should never have a police officer who's been a police officer for 15, 16 years to put his knee on somebody's neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds. That's a, that's a problem. You should not have a police officer that goes on the scene, a guy is trying to talk to him and he ends up shooting him, right? He tases him and then he shoots him too. You shouldn't have police officers that go into people's houses in the middle of the night and then kill them. You understand what I'm saying? Like, so that there is a problem. And so police, uh, so now you're saying because Joe Biden gets elected and he wants to bring some sort of reform to make sure police officers don't kill innocent unarmed people. Now, all of a sudden you're trying to say you scared of, the, you, 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 you worried about what's going to happen to the police. Okay, so that means they, they, they make it look like police reform is such a bad thing, and they. Yeah. The, but but, then, a, but that even in saying that, it's a complete disregard for the people that died at the hand of police for absolutely. no reason, right? So, you, so it's like that don't that doesn't matter to you at all. Like you ain't got no kind of problems with this. So to me, so that's a whole nother like. Please, you basically talking about you don't care nothing about black people when you when you over there saying like, oh, I'm just worried about the police. Okay, that that's another foolishness. The other, the, so the other point I want to make too is that I don't think that whole 71 percent, 71 million folks really voted for Trump. I think there's a significant portion of those people that voted against Kamala Harris. Okay, so don't get that twisted that they got a whole problem with that woman, right? That's and right. It, that's exactly right. Yeah, you and need to see that. a woman. Yeah. That, yeah. That, go ahead. Break. No, no Sandy. Right. So, so some of that, like that, everybody, like, oh, that was all for Trump. That was not all for Trump. No, it wasn't. That no. was against Kamala, right? There's like you yes. bring a black and a brown woman on this to to be like one heartbeat away from the presidency. Are you? And she got thoughts. And she got thoughts. And okay. she got like curry. She got fat. She got all of that happening. Yes. And these yes. fifty-five percent of white women overwhelmingly supported Hillary Clinton in the last election. Mm-hmm. You do have to sort of um, ask yourself, and it's an honest thing. Like people need to be honest with themselves and just say, I have a problem with a black woman being in this position before a white woman gets in this this position. Because they don't have no problem with underqualified. They don't have, they don't have, sorry, Stephanie. They don't have any problems with underqualified, unqualified white men having positions of power, right? But you can have an overqualified person of color and all of a sudden, oh, I don't think they should have that job. Like, really? Okay. Look at the whole president. Y'all don't know what his grades are because he won't release not one of his transcripts. I look at look at the Supreme Court. Um, look at the Supreme Court uh, woman Amy that they put in there. That woman hasn't been on no, the, the, didn't do no trial. Like this woman has barely what she needs to be a Supreme Court justice, barely. Yeah. And they voted for overwhelmingly, right? Yeah. You think, if you think if it was a black woman they were trying to get in there, that would have been easy no. for her to just no, no, not at all. Not nominated. At all. We need to be no. honest about. That's what people need to be honest about at the end of the day, because I'll tell you, even when I was running, I was the most, if you look at my credentials on paper, I was the most qualified, I am the most qualified position person in that race. So if you look at that, but then you have a person that tells you, well, why do, why do those credentials matter? They matter, they only matter when we're the ones who don't have them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right, when we start right. about that, because I ran against somebody who didn't even have a high school degree insanity he's the incumbent and he can say whatever he wants to say about having to drop out of high school to to start his family business or whatever you were nine years old when all that happened you can that's a lot that you could tell the rest of the country 
but right. that goes back to what I was saying that the white people are inherently deathly afraid of black people because like you said they weren't a, a lot of those people were not voting for Trump they were voting against Kamala they yes. most definitely they most definitely are and they most definitely did mm -hmm. and um I was telling um, Nikki this um, earlier today that people have the ability to overlook anything that doesn't align with their worldview, Absolutely. you know, and that's, that's a problem. And, and, and white people just will never admit it. They will just never admit it. They are definitely and black people too. It's some black people that are the exact same way. We have to oh, look yeah. at some of the things that we have people so, um, so aligned with a uh, party or with, you know, that, you know, you have the exact same issue on the other side, especially in the local races. I would say you see it more in the local races where you have uh, this favoritism and this cronyism. We have the same type of political machines in the black community that they have in a white community. We need to start calling them out because in, yeah, I have the, the county, uh, the, the county mayor of uh, uh, Broward County mayor tell me that he can't support me because he's supporting this unqualified individual over me because of this machine. You can say whatever you want to say. That's a problem. And so we get to the point where we're starting to look at candidates based on what are they bringing to the table. And I'll tell you something else. All these people out there protesting, not protesting, but celebrating with their Biden, Harris signs and stuff, they need to be at a desk right now, writing a list of things that they want Biden and Harris to accomplish for their Absolutely. communities. Absolutely. Whether it's the Absolutely. LGBTQ, whether it's the black community, whether it's women, whether it's whatever it is, we need to be sending them a plan instead Absolutely. of uh, celebrating at this point. And so that's yes. what we're short as voters. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah you, I agree. You, you right on the head. Absolutely. To touch on your point, um, Stephanie, I do agree with you as far as African Americans, uh, Black people as well. A lot of Black people, they do want to be free. Um, and uh, what I find, um, not only in the political realm, because I'm, I'm not a politician, um, but even in the medical field, a lot of Black people want to be free and they want to attain this uh, level of success. But Black people, I find that they have their own side psychological issues with self-hatred and they don't want to see another black person lead them to freedom and i don't understand i don't know if that makes sense um well if you understand it's, what i'm saying absolutely when, you, makes you sense. About, when you think about um uh harriet tubman and she's going back in and there, there's a part where she's trying to get her sister to go she refuses to go she just mm -hmm. seems to let that part of her go and it's not um something that we want to criticize her about is because of the, you know, at the time and how the, the psyche, you know, and there's a lot of that going on. And, and right. that is very, very true. Um, there is this level of alliance that is made in these local elections and these local politicians and these local elected officials. And that really needs to stop because we're putting preference over people. And that's one of the things Sandra and I talk about all the time, Con this constant preference over people. And now, you know, you see, and then it, and it Relation, you can see why um, I'm not gonna say Ice Cube because he said he was gonna talk to both sides. But if you see Little Wayne and those people, it's it's money over people at this point, right? Yeah, and so yeah. we and and that's the problem. But it goes back to stuff like so that. So we expect. Listen, we expect too much from people that don't know nothing. Okay, so that. Okay, that dude ain't took not one class on nothing, right? So we, so there's certain expectations that you can't have from everybody, right? And that's part of the problem that we have in America is the way we're educated. We're not properly educated in this country at all, right? We're not taught anything about, we're barely taught about the contributions of people of color to the to the greatness of this country, right? So you're always taught as like, oh, all you were was a slave and you know, that kind of stuff. And we're also taught like, um, again, we talk about that, the insidiousness of like how they do that low key brainwashing that's, that goes deep into your subconscious where you do like somebody white does have to be your rescuer, right? We're taught that. If we were talking about movies like an episode so six and some y'all some people wasn't feeling what I was saying, but I'm telling you, like the images that they put out there, the images that they put out there, it, it, it it's it's playing with your mind and it's have you not loving yourself, right? Yes. They have you loving everybody but yourself. And yes. there's a, I saw a commercial the other day, and I'm telling you, boy, there's like a serious attack on black women at, in these commercials. And if you if you watch them, you will see how how we're like disappearing, like we're disappearing, like. On, in, the, in the relationships that they're having, you listen, 
I'm just saying. So I have the time where you can't necessarily, it, um, there's a level of self-awareness that we need to get and you pretty much have to get it on your own because we're, the, the society is not teaching us that. We're not learning it in school. We're not learning it in the images that we see. And that's why uh, when um, Ms. Forbes said that representation matter, it does. We do need to see a Kamala so we can kind of fight against all of this stuff that's telling us that we don't matter, right? Because everything else is telling us that we don't matter. We don't have a place. So she's there and, and she's inspiring us um, to have a place. And I think that's why so many people fought against it, right? Because everything they're doing is telling us that we don't matter. We ain't nothing. We're not smart enough. We're not good enough. We're not any of that. And then all of a sudden, this chick come here killing the game, right? She came yep. in literally killing the game and she brought all, you know, by, she, she brought those people of color out you know what I'm saying, to, to support this ticket. Well, look at, look at the power that we have. What about Simone Sanders? Let's just oh, yeah. 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 Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, Simone did that. Simone did that. that. Simone did that. She did that. And she needs to do that in Georgia. Yeah. These sisters, they, they did it. They did yeah. it. Yeah. it Simone Sanders it. and Corinne Jean Pierre. Yeah, yeah. Corinne Jean Pierre. Yeah. 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 She's going to be on her two staff. They had to face because if you look at what happened and what occurred, progressive Democrats, and I can sort of understand where they're going because they're trying to move the party into a different place, but they had a, a very uh, specific attack on, Kam on Kamala, mm -hmm. but that attack didn't, when, when Joe Biden became the nominee, they didn't have that same um, veracity. It wasn't until Kamala was added to the ticket that right. they with all of the memes and all these other things mm -hmm. we have to at the end of the day acknowledge that there is a very big segment of the population who's not ready to see black women in leadership position yeah they don't think that we can do it it might be because they know that we're more than capable of doing it but we're going to a yes. place to where we are not going to be bought and paid for because Absolutely. if you poor your whole life Yep. If you've already lived with a certain standard your entire life, whatever that standard is, you've out, that's ingrained in you. And so the, the women that, that the candidates that I have seen put forward for the most part, black women candidates are not the same as some of the white male candidates that we have seen that are willing to take that payoff and willing to do whatever it is for the special interest. These women, tend to have the better interest of the, the greater good at heart. And right. I think when you are in a political realm, they don't want the greater good at heart. They want someone that they can control and buy out. And that's why Peter Hernandez stayed in office so long. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's true. Okay. It's true. So like, I'm going to go around the room because we're going to wrap up. We're like, you know, a little bit over time. But I'd like each woman to have an opportunity to just make a statement or a you know, feeling, whatever, um, as to how we're going to be moving forward. Um, well, Steffi, I hope Steffi. Yeah, but there was one little. There was one little point that we didn't uh, make. Right, we were supposed to talk a little bit about the Hispanic vote. We can yes. put that off for something else. And you know, I, um, you know, Stephanie was the one that was on the campaign trail. I don't know if she has like any thoughts on that, and like kind of like. What happened? I'm so Hispanic glad vote was the white vote in Florida. The, the Hispanic vote and the white vote were the same in, in Florida for the most part. Mm -hmm. They have been able to um, to give the success the exact same false narrative to um, to Hispanic um, voters and letting and, and telling them that if you align yourself with us, um, that there's hope for and you know I'm sorry back to some of the things that were put into place for Hispanics when they arrived here in this country, you know, and some of the things that the benefits that they were given that um, black people to this day still have not even received the reparations. And so if you are aligning yourself with a particular party, um, you're gonna align yourself. And the, the, the ironic thing about it though is the Republicans weren't even the ones who gave them those benefits. <laughs> That's the funny thing about it. They didn't establish the the uh, those benefits, but they ran on them, and mm -hmm. so 
Mm -hmm. And I think they, they also were saying like they were putting out the message that like the Democrats were socialists and communists or something like that. Yes, and a lot of the people from they kind of fell for that. So the Democrats have to do better with their digital media. I heard AOC talking about that the other day is that, you know, they, they weren't really good with the digital media because it was all of these false narratives that were being out there. And the Democrats didn't have the game to kind of fight against that. And also they used the pandemic as an excuse to not go door to door, even though like the super spreader events, they were like, we don't care about this Rona, we finna go to y'all house, right? And yeah. we were afraid of that, which is something that we need to do because people need to like see you and see you there and kind of you know speak to you. So that was some shortcomings because we lost a lot of seats. I mean, we lost a lot of seats in the Florida yeah. um, House and the Florida Senate that we should not have lost. And we lost like a total of ten. We, we lost like a total of ten, right? A total yeah, it was bad. It was it was like a it was a, it was bad. It was bad. Um, and like and a man can talking about he finna pass a law where you can like just go kill black people like. <laughs> well, the narrative that they're being that they're being given is that you know even if they don't agree with Trump as a Republican, it's sort of like if you if you don't um, you may not agree with Trump, but now he's a symbol of the Republican Party. You don't want people thinking that you're a racist because you're a Republican, so you're going to try to take those same characteristics away from this president and say, oh, he's not this and he's not that because of all of this. And so then you have those same individuals out there campaigning. They were heavily campaigning. And like I said, even the Hispanic Democratic person in my race was passing out the Republican voter guide. So, and he wasn't passing out the Democrat re re um, voter guide. Wow. So I'm just saying there's a lot of duplicity going on here. And um, at the end of the day, Sandra, you're absolutely right. It's about messaging. It's about if I'm telling you that um, that if you vote this way, that this is that these are your beliefs. And that so basically people who are Republican believe that all Democrats are baby killers. They're this, they're law, law, law all this stuff. Yeah. All of this stuff, because that's what's been put out there with no, uh, with you know, nothing to contradict it. Yeah, yeah, and and we did talk about that, Sandra, and I think I mentioned it to Tate also. Is that the the Democratic Party needs to do a better job of message. not only messaging but also how they reach individual groups and communities, right? Absolutely, we're all different, and I think Sandra mentioned that. Uh, the Hispanic are not. Um, yeah, even the Hispanics are different. They're, 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 they're not. Yeah, they're not like the African American community is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I agree with that sentiment. Um, I mean, the Democratic Party, Party definitely needs to do better with reaching all, you know, all groups, especially our Black men. Yeah. Especially our Black need, men. They need to do a better job of communicating what it is to what the the, the the views and values of the individuals within that party are. Because traditionally, Black people have been more conservative than white people have. Especially right? from the islands. Especially from the islands. We're like, we're like very yeah. conservative. Right. Very so, conservative. Yeah. Like, so, I'm so like, we're very we're conservative. Babies. We don't kill babies. We're not the ones out here having abortions. Nope. And even Young kids we like church and everything. I went to when I was growing up, I went to church six days a week and twice on Sunday. <laughs> like I, I'm not kidding. I went to church six days a week, twice on Sundays until I was 10 years old. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know what these people are talking about. Like we that's exactly right. And most people still are doing, just giving the same message. You know, wait till you're married before you have babies. Mm -hmm the messages that go out in the black home would um, would completely astound the the white community but they we have somebody else telling our stories telling what is important to us yeah yeah it, it's it's amazing but this has been a very fruitful conversation i enjoyed it immensely and i'm glad that you guys kind of kept me in a line where i wasn't bashing the 55 percent because no there was, that was no bashing it was it was pure facts I, I know, but I, I was gonna come in there and be petty. Listen, they need to figure out their truth and they need to sit in that and stop like um, hiding behind all of these nonsense about abortions and the police and all of this and gay rights and all of that. Y'all know what y'all really mad at. Figure That's that out. Right. There you go. The 55% that the people that made up that 55%, I'm, I know that many of those women we will see in our other um, walks of life because they are environmentalists. They are people who are out here 
they're actually out here doing the work in these streets. But then at the end of the day, mm -hmm. they found a way to justify voting for this president. I know several of them. Like, you know, if you look at the post and the things that they try to come back with, you yeah. know they voted for Trump. Right. Right. I think they just want a piece in their house. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need that man talking crazy to me tonight. <laughs> Nobody knows how you vote. Right. So you can write down whatever you want to. At the right. end of the day, I truly, honestly she believe a lot of her husband. <laughs> on this post earlier is that white women were not ready to see a black woman in that position before a white woman got there. That's exactly it. That's it. Yeah. You know, that's it. Pure, that's pure, pure jealousy, pure competition. It was, it was, it, it had nothing to do. You're right. It had nothing to do with him. It had she really was like an HU bison black. What Stephanie had touched on earlier, she was saying that it's not, she doesn't feel like it's because white women didn't believe that a black woman can do the job. It's because she knew, they knew that we can do the job. I mean, from the beginning of time, who was rearing the white children in the house? Mm -hmm. That was a black woman. Who was who was giving the, the 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 white children breast milk? That was black women. Who was taking care of the white man? That was black women. So really, they know that really we can do the job, and that's what the problem is. Yeah, un really un problem. Problem. but we did it. Un un but we did it though. We did it, mm -hmm. and then you know, uh, I sent you a TikTok about a woman that said back in seventeen was it seventeen ninety? They passed a law that you couldn't beat your slaves to death, right? And that law was specifically because it was white women mm -hmm. who were beating the female black slave to death because their husbands mm -hmm. uh, slept with them and then they were killing the children on top of that. Mm -hmm. That's why that law was created. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that that 55 percent that's deeply rooted. It's seated in them. I, that's how I feel. But we did it first, as we always do. Um, take notes, sis. You know, your, the, white, the white sisters, y'all need to take notes. <laughs> Uh, figure out how you're going to come up with somebody else. You may not get one in, in the next four years, uh, but you know, you could try. Um, and so we're going to wrap this up. Uh, so Sandra, w you wanted to make one more plea for mm -hmm. our senators. Oh, oh. oh yeah. Yo, uh, what, what's his name? Georgia. John Ossoff and uh, Rev Raphael Warnock. Yes. Come on, Georgia. We need y'all. Right. I it. donated. Um, Sandra, if you can post that. Um, I donate. Yes, I donate. Yeah, I donated too. Please yeah. donate to these candidates. Um, Sandra, if you can post on your page the donate. Fight, okay, yeah. So fight fight to them so they can Abrams, um, um, fair fight. I'll put it on. I'll put it on the page. Yep. Uh, please, y'all. We, we need to do this because we need to ditch Mitch. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm sick of him. I'm so. He Sick got to go. <laughs> Such a hypocrite. Like the dude, like, and he said the stuff with a straight face. I'm like, bruh, but you said something different. Like, Lying. what? You know what I'm saying? When it didn't oh, oh, I have, and that's a problem that, that other voters should have. If this was consistent, then yeah, let's, you know, this, the rules are the rules. Mm -hmm. But when you know that people are changing the rules based on who's in office, yeah, then right. you know, at some point you have to decide whether your country is more important to, to you than whether this, um, to, or the policy politics that, 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 we're, that we're running on. And honest to God, people don't care about this country. Yeah, not, yeah, not if they vote for these people. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, Mitch got that lady in off um on that Supreme Court in a month, and he couldn't get the other guy in in nine. <laughs> I was like, oh, you could. It was a, and we were already voting when they started her stuff. But you know, hey, yeah, it, it, done. It, but you, it, know, it, you know, they they, they have the they have the uh they have what's that saying that I always say they have the 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 complexion for the connection. Yeah, and they give for you the corruption, the, you know, inclusion. So that's what that is, okay? So in, enjoy that while you can, because come January 20th, honey. <laughs> yeah, no, January 5th, 2021, we need Georgia. We need y'all to vote Georgia. for Yes, and, definitely. And also, so, we need y'all to do that. Said, I want people who are watching not to, not to feel um, uneasy about what's going on right now, right? So that is just how he played. That's what he does. He can't help it. Uh, he's a big man, baby child, and he has to fight. You know, he has to leave with a fight. So but don't let that distract you or dis deter you. Come January 5th, we're going to get those two seats. And then come January 20th, we're going to bring in our, 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 you know, our Kamala and our Joe Biden. You, the song that she came out with, y'all need to listen to that Mary J. Blaze. Yeah. Listen to the lyrics. 
It was yeah. a that was the most befitting song she can come out to. Okay. Um, and so we're gonna wrap up. So I'm gonna let Tay go, then we're gonna let Stephanie go, and then Sandra's gonna close us out. Okay, so uh, final thoughts. I just wanna say, Black people, we see you. I'm so proud of the way that we showed up and showed out, especially our Black women. Uh, we never fail, never, never fail. Um, but it's not only imperative that we get up and we get out and vote, it's also imperative that we stay and remain engaged. Let's start writing policy, people, because voting is only entry level and it's not really gonna get us to where we need to be. Absolutely, that's wonderful. Thank you, for Ms. Ford. We have to bring you back <laughs> on, girl, because you just like the point. Okay, <laughs> Stephanie, Ms. Stephanie, who just came off the election, the campaign. Woo, girl, I know you tired. Do you sleep yet, do you sleep yet? I am, but I wanna encourage people to to um to think about running especially if you are an individual you feel like you have the qualifications put together a coalition of people because at the end of the day our voices do matter and they count we need to um, do a better job of making sure that we engage these candidates after they're already elected i've already um, reached out to our new um, uh, commissioner elect linda and hill anderson and i want to give her a shout out she became the first um, black woman and first woman elected from our district too. And Hollywood first woman, first black person elected to serve period on this. And so at this point we need to support her and make sure that she, um, you know, she understands what she's up against because at the end of the day, um, black, white or otherwise, we all need to come together and create a, a policy set that work for everybody. This is not a black and white issue. What this country has turned into is a um, an economic um, is economic discrimination. Mm -hmm. And as long as you are in that tax bracket where you've got that little two hundred thousand dollars in it, a year coming in and you think that you OK, then nobody's going to be OK. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I just want to encourage, I'm taking a page out of Tay's book and Stephanie's book to really kind of stay engaged. It's important just because the campaign is over and the election over doesn't mean that we don't stop our work here. Um, we know a lot of grass, uh, between the four of us, we know a lot of grassroots people. We need to stay engaged with those people and bring in other people into the fold, especially Black women, because we see how we constantly come in and make a difference. Um, I want to tell my Black women, I love you all. I'm so glad that we are who we are and what we do. We're never going to stop. Uh, and I also want to say that uh, while Stephanie man mentioned that it's not a Black and white issue, but what I can say about race is that when Black people put their heads together and push through policy and push through progressive policies, everybody benefits exactly. everybody benefits not just us everybody benefits and i think people tend to ignore that fact that when we come up with stuff that we push through to get us equality everybody benefits on top of that so it's important that we understand it and we push that narrative out there and people understand that it's not just for us but we do it for everyone even though this country has treated us like trash from an inception we still know, we still came in, we still decided we were gonna get through this and we still were going to do things. And we know that when we do something, you all benefit, but we still do it anyway. Mm -hmm. That goes, that, that means a lot, that, that, that shows a lot for our race. So um, stay engaged, stay empowered, be focused, um, the next four years are going to be very, very telling. We cannot drop the ball. We're going to hold Biden and Harris accountable. We're going yeah. to hold our elected officials accountable. And 2022 is around the corner and DeSantis has to go. And, so we and Rubio. Focus on and Marco Rubio. And, 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 and Rick Scott. And Rick Scott, no, Rick Scott is not, Rick Scott is 24. Marco Rubio is 22. Okay. So, okay. So, but he got to go to in 24. That's two years after that. We still need to build a coalition. And we need to have people ready to go and run in these places. Absolutely. You know, we have people that are running unopposed. We have people that are getting into these seats and they shouldn't be there. Yeah. And it's important, Narnike, when we, like you said, when we, um, the, the systems that are already put into place that are bringing um, down uh, minorities and um, poor and underserved communities, we, by us fighting, those systems are not just affecting us. You put them in a place thinking that they were just going to affect us, but now they are affecting a broader range of individuals. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. To that same point, when we fight as, um, as um, Black and um, Brown and Latino people, Latinas, 
we fight for everybody to create, to take away those systems. And so everybody comes up and you're absolutely right. Everybody benefits. Yeah. And and part of that is because we are like the most disrespected um, group of individuals, right? So we know like if it's going to be bad for one person, it's going to be worse for us. So we definitely, and it's not only, it's not necessarily only selfish. It's not like, okay, no, we, we just doing this for us. We are doing it for other, other people, but we also recognize in that is that we we always we tend to get the short end of the stick right and you and we're and we're, we're used to fighting and um you know so we have to continue doing that um and i want to we got to shout out some sisters that won their races right so jennifer andreu won her seat in plantation right so you know we shout out for her that was first time running she killed the game she did it she got the percentages she put in that work she won jacqueline guzman won her seat in um sunrise there was another um, brother that was in that race too that was a very good candidate but just jacqueline um pulled it off and aisha gordon won her seat in oakland park and there's some more mm-hmm. sisters that won their races but those are all yeah, first time candidates there that put in that work and they did that right and and that and we need to see more of that happening because we do need to be engaged because one of the things that we were talking about was the down ballot candidates and you know the people that are in your communities that are going to be making day-to-day decisions about what's going on with you and we wanted y'all to you know go and vote for them and you guys showed um showed up did that and you know we're very proud of all the residents of those cities that voted those very qualified women in and they're going to go in there and they're going to do great work for um, for all of their residents the absentee ballots brought that home for those candidates. I will just say that in our race, particularly, mm-hmm. the incumbent um, actually won the vote in terms of the uh, election day counts, but the um, the absentee ballots he got blown away in terms of that. And so, you know, making sure that we do engage um, these absentee voters and going out and letting them know that you know you have a viable candidate. And we might have to do door to door. That's what we did. We did door to door. And, um, you know, it, I just really want to encourage people to not be discouraged from running. You know, right. it is a, a like there was some like it, I've never seen so many arguments and, um, you know, just cussing each other out. And this was the candidates like this were the candidates in the race. I'm like, oh, acting like this in front of the voters. But, you know, at the end of the day, people that are willing to stand out there and go, you know, I'm willing to put myself out there and I'm hoping that we have more people and we need to find those people now so that two years from now, they are already, you know, Absolutely. Yeah, and there was a there was a sister that won in um Pompano too, because I was I was like somebody you need to run. Yeah, Martin was the last I name. Can't I, her name. I can't remember Martin was the last name. Martin was the last name. The last was, name was um, a mayor, um, the yeah. Westlake mayor. I think um, she won as well. And Tamara yeah. won her re, um, won her seat again. Tamara, um, yeah. she she was uh, she was running again and she won her seat. So yeah, yeah. we need to we need to keep Get out here. And there's, are- there's, a, there's a runoff in um Daniela Jean is in a runoff in North Miami um mm-hmm. for like a seat there. So yeah, we need to keep up. We definitely need to keep up the um the good work. And yeah, like like Stephanie said, don't be scared to run. Go ahead and do it. We need y'all to start doing it now. Y'all need some help. Holla at us. We're gonna give you whatever information that we have. Georgia, yep. Georgia, please, you know, flip all the way blue. Just send yes. all the January 5th. January 5th. It was a pleasure. And Stephanie, can I just tell you, thank you so much for hopping on at such short notice. Um, We love you. We appreciate you. We hope that you will always keep your uh, phone open anytime we call. Absolutely. Thank you. appreciate you so much. And you bring a wealth of information and knowledge and so much encouragement. And so we're so happy to have you. Um, And thank you so much for coming in such short notice. Hey, send a message to your auntie. (laughs) I'm not, I'm not I, to, I need her to find her truth and sit in it. <laughs> Tay, huh? hey, thank you so much for coming and allowing and you know lending us your voice. Um, My pleasure. Love your last thoughts. Uh, we really appreciate that. Um, I know that you're thinking about starting something um, in the city that we're in. I mm-hmm. whatever you need to help us to help you get you where you need to be. Please know that we're open and and, and ready to help. Um, and ready to support you and what you want to do. Thank you. Um, and Sandra and I will be back here next week with two new guests. We'll see. Oh, well, actually, our reoccurring guest, Carol, will be back with us by then. But yes. we'll bring somebody new, and we got to figure out what topic we're going to talk about. 
I, I gotta go give me two weeks to get over this fifty five percent. And and, and um, I, I think um, I still, I think um, we still ain't gonna. We know who the president is, but I think <laughs> our boy gonna still be in denial. <laughs> right. Right. Can I ask you real quick? Do you guys think that they'll have to drag him out of the White House or he'll oh, leave? Yeah, yeah. I, and I, I want to be here. I want to see it too. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna have to tranquilize him. You know, you know what? This is what's being said is that he's going to come to West Palm for the holidays and he's just not going to go back to DC. That's what um, like Michael that. the, the Michael Cohen said on one of the new That's shows. He said he's going to come to West Palm for the holidays and just not going to go back. Well, he can, stay, he can stay his ass over there. Stay in West Palm Beach, girl. Just stay. You, know, you, you ain't doing nothing anyway. 147,000 yeah, yeah. cases of, of COVID in the United States, you're not doing nothing. He's so because he, you know, he he was he was out there firing people and making others resign, and then he um you know appointing his friends, you know his lawyer friends. So he up to some kind of no good. But you know mm -hmm. we just know we like you know like she said democracy's restored. We just need to get back. You know I mean can you imagine they did fireworks in London when they announced that Biden was the president elect? Wow. They were shooting up fireworks in London. And Wait, what did? What did the president, what did the prime minister of uh, Paris, 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 he said, welcome back, America. <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen, the world is happy and so are we. Listen, oh, yeah. it, 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 there is, it, it, there's a testament to, 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 to something that uh, people rejoice at you, at your downfall. Like you, yeah. people, I mean, like that means something. Yeah. I, if I were him, I would just keep a low profile do That's what he's doing. You ain't, we ain't heard nothing from him, except for on Twitter. But I don't follow him, so I don't know what he's. Saying. I got I think I think that he showed up at Arlington Cemetery today. But he didn't say a word. Yeah. He didn't say. Yeah, a word. he didn't say anything. He didn't say yeah. anything. <laughs> anything. We have we have a president that has um that is um. But he, not dementia. What is it when you the other one that they have? Um, Alzheimer's. He's senile. Oh, he's a senile. Oh, he's senile. Yeah, he yeah. Senile. If you look at some of the things that he's done throughout the last four years, he really does appear to be. I'm not being facetious. I really believe that this man has a mental um, Ill, um, health deficiency. Absolutely. He oh, should yeah. never have been in office in the first place. But at the end of the day, you see how um, white men control that narrative because when they had the option of putting in someone else, they chose him over that candidate, and now even this one they tried again. And so, no, they allowed him to do and be who he is. They completely yeah. allowed that. They're complicit yeah. in all of that. Mm -hmm. He's been now and mean. Yeah, see now and mean. He's just, he's just not. He, got, he actually got them elected down ballot. Mm -hmm. He wasn't, you know, there wasn't enough Americans, um, you know, overall to to get him back in there. But there were enough in each one of those states, those little pockets yeah. that we wanted to see him in a different capacity. And so that, that's how we got so many people down ballot. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we have to be aware of. He for definitely now. helped the, um, the um, U.S. representatives in South Florida because mm -hmm. they lost all, they they lost both of their seats. The, uh, yeah. You know, Shalala lost her seat. And Mark did you see Debbie lost her seat. almost lost hers? Who? Debbie Washington Schultz almost lost hers. Can you imagine? Yeah, the 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 uh, she lost she she um, the reason why she won was because the the absentee ballots put her way over the top. Yeah. But in day and early voting, she lost to Carl Carla Spalding, the Republican Black um, candidate. Sure did. Yep. Yep. She yep. She almost did. She almost. Yeah, I'm absolutely. telling you, they these I, I, the Democrats need to take a book uh, you know a page out of the playbook of the Republicans. I'm telling yeah, you, the fight they in. You know, yeah. and they gotta not be scared of this digital media. They have to do better. Yeah, yeah. they gotta be. They gotta. They gotta bring that message in. You, listen, they gotta bring the heat. Yeah, because you can't let that stuff go and not respond to it. It's, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Well, it's been great, ladies. Thank you, ladies, thank you so thank much. You, so much. Thank you, you guys are so awesome. Go back to your baby, Tay. Stephanie, go get <laughs> rest. Uh, Sandra, you know how we roll, girl. I'm about to call you in a few minutes. Yes, uh, we'll talk about it. Yeah, we're going to talk about it. But thank you so much. And that dog behind you, Stephanie, is He's adorable. Oh, I've been staring He's at him delicious. the whole time. Yes. He's so cute. <laughs> delicious. Yes, look at that. <laughs> yeah. My name is Cinnamon Mickey. What do you weigh, like three pounds or something? No, she weighs one pound. What? She just, okay. She in my hand. 
Wow. <laughs> One pound. She is cute. She's a teacup so um, chihuahua. Oh, she's adorable. She's yeah. You look already spoiled, yeah. Stephanie. We see what you're doing. Um, spoiled after this campaign, I'm like, ooh, get this dirt off of me. <laughs> That's right. Bring back the bring back the goodness. Bring back the goodness. Good All right, ladies, you guys have a great night. Thank you for the uh, what the corona was like, Miss Ford. That was definitely um enlightening, you know. Yes, my pleasure. I, I, yeah. I, I can't take it no more, but thank you very yeah. much. It brings some uh, uh clarity for the one that voted for him. That's still no, but she made me feel better because yeah. I'm like, that was my thing. I was like, we can't he not he messing this up. And I didn't even know it was as bad as she said, but I knew mm -hmm. that we couldn't trust him to deal with that anymore. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So listen, stay engaged, everyone. The fight still continues. Just because we got over the hump doesn't mean that we uh, see the clearing yet. So just let's stay engaged and let's focus and make sure we bring everybody into the fold, right? Because yep, right. black people win. win. Everybody win. <laughs> All right. Good night. Uh, good night, everybody. Good night. Bye. Bye.